So when we strategically develop our curriculum, we need to ask ourselves, where are we in this journey of the product versus the process? Or maybe we should think of it in content versus concept. When we're product driven, we focus about what music are we going to play and why are we going to play it. That's important and we need to decide that. But I think there's some, some strong supportive arguments in the data that show perhaps we need to consider what concepts become out of that puzzle that we created earlier as we design all of those different type things off of the rubric of the criterion reference evaluation forms. What are those concepts that we need to teach? And make sure we focus our journey on concept mastery as we move through rigor and more demanding literature. That takes us to the question about abstract versus concrete. We've been really confident for years now that in all learning, all education, not just music, that abstract concepts take longer to learn than concrete. So that causes me to reflect with a little bit of trepidation, to be honest. It's, I had to look at it and think about it. So when we're designing our curriculum with strategy, we need to think about this whole notion of concepts and which ones are concrete versus abstract. Because we all know from educational research in any subject matter, not just music, that the abstract concepts take longer to learn than concrete. We are all comfortable in agreement in that, I think. So as I started reflecting on my own teaching and my own curriculum design, I had to ask myself, wait a minute. I'm kind of just teaching the way I always was taught, just modeling my former teachers. And in an eight-week concert cycle, that might mean I would spend six weeks doing notes and rhythm, 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 and then go, oh my gosh, we've got to suddenly learn to play in tune. We've got to make sure that the trombones get to fifth position and the piccolos, oh my gosh, softer. How about intonation? Well, if we think about abstract versus concrete, perhaps the reason the trombone players don't find fifth position for that concert is because we didn't give them enough time to develop the abstract concept. The research also shows us that it takes eight cycles of repetition to create a habit. It takes 28 cycles of repetition to break that habit and create a new one. So when you take that amount of data and you combine that with Daniel Levinton's suggestion in his national bestseller, This Is Your Brain on Music, where he says the brain accesses data in chunks of information. So think about it. When you first started out, you were learning the B-flat concert scale. You would think B-flat, C, D, E-flat. But then at some point in your progress as a player, you went B-flat concert scale. You access that information as a chunk. Well, the brain is so sophisticated that when it acts, accesses data and you want to edit it, it's not quite as simple as we are accustomed to when we're dealing like with a word processing document. You know, today, when we want to have a folder, if you're working on your, your music handbook for the school year and you have a folder with 10 documents in it, you want to change document number two and you click it and open it up and you make a couple of edits and you hit save and go to document number seven and you type in a few little edits there and you're done, your handbook is updated. You're good to go but not so when it comes to music performance, where you see the brain is so sophisticated that it hardwires all of your data into one composite. And that's why it takes eight repetitions to create the habit, but 28 repetitions to break a habit and create a new one. Because what happens is you have to throw out the old habit and rebuild the file with the abstract concepts included. So you see, that's why the trombone player didn't quite master fifth position. It's not because they were being a trombone player and problematic and difficult to deal with. No, it's because we as the teacher didn't provide the abstract instruction along in their journey, and we didn't give them 28 repetitions 
to now throw out the old and add the abstract. So the realization of the, the research and how that plays out as far as learning and, and how the brain functions really caused me to take a big step back and think about how we teach, how we go about teaching our, our curriculum and our standards. It made me reflect, okay, well, if, if this is where we are, this is we, where we want to be, how will we get there needs to have some significant revision. In reflection to how do we get there, this is what we know. Most people get really good doing the things which they do a lot. I heard that years ago from Dr. Tim Lotzenheiser. And he's right. You know, the people that complain a lot, well, they get really good at complaining. And the people who work on their long tones in the upper register create the opportunity to become very resonant and can float and almost seem effortless in that upper register. Because people get really good at doing the things that they spend the most time doing. Here's what we also know about performing. It's a, performing with excellence is a skill, and it takes deliberate practice to achieve excellence. In Jeff Colvin's national bestseller, Talent is Overrated, he talks about Jerry Rice, an NFL wide receiver that's probably outscored and has the highest stats of almost anyone who's ever played the game. But when he looked at the analysis of how he achieved those stats, there's a couple of things. A, longevity of the game. He was fortunate enough not to have a lot of injury and was able to have a long career, so he had a long time to develop his stats. But more importantly, he attributes his success to not what he did during the game, not what he did in the performance opportunity in front of an audience. It was what he did and the deliberateness and the evaluation of where am I? Where do I want to be? How do I hone these specific skills? And would work with his teammates in developing certain skills of different plays. And they would rehearse that. They would practice that very deliberately and intentionally. And it was how those intentional, deliberate skills that were developed in isolation, how they were then transformed as a team member and the results that he was able to achieve as part of the team as a result of that is what he attributed to his great success in his career. If you think about how that applies to us, when I explored a variety of people who have won the Sudler flag, uh, one of the, I think one of the widely adopted uh, kind of lifetime achievement awards in our profession that looks at your um, success and what you've achieved over a seven year period, kind of a um, portfolio, if you will. The people that have received the Sudler flag, when you analyze and talk with them, as I have, I found that most all of them spend 40 or 50 percent of their instructional time, whether that's 56 minutes a day, whether it's a block schedule, 90 minutes a day, doesn't matter. Whatever your timeline is, 40 to 50 percent is spent in deliberate concept skill, fundamental development. That's right. That's a lot of time. But what they've discovered is that when you spend that much time in deliberate practice of the ensemble, then those, th those skills transfer into the greater good of the learning, and the learning on the back end becomes exponentially faster as you move through more rigor and more advanced literature because the fundamentals have been mastered. The other key component that I think of what we know is that no matter how old you are, Students in general, all people are motivated through the successful achievement of short-term goals that lead to long-term growth. Perhaps maybe we want to go ahead and have a concert six weeks into the school year. I know that sounds scary when you think about sixth grade. If they just get a chance to come together and play hot cross buns with three different repetitions, let the percussion play an eight count something, in between, and we hear the horns and the clarinets in isolation in the second repetition, and then we hear some mallet work in the percussion, and then when we get to the next repeat of hot cross buns, we get to hear three other sections, and then we repeat it again, and we do it all full to the ensemble. There's lots of ways that we can give students the opportunity to have short-term goals of what they're practicing for, what they're working toward, and then they get that fulfillment 
of getting out to play it. And moms and dads, they're going to love it. Now they know why they're spending all that money renting an instrument, right? So it's the, the fulfillment of the goal that motivates the next growth. Those students are excited about what they got to do because you're going to pump them all up about how amazing that was. We know it wasn't content mastery yet. But we, we often push back against that thinking, oh, I can't put that in public. We're, we're not ready for people to hear it outside these walls. When you think about our marching band colleagues, they do that every year. Trust me, those performances in late August and early September are nowhere near mastery. But we've learned to accept that. We, we know going into it that the band is going to get better every Friday night. So why not give our students in the concert cycle Give them the opportunity in their curriculum to have short-term goals that they can achieve, feel confident in, feel comfortable in, get uh, validation for their hard work, and motivate the next growth journey as a musician. So, how do we get there? We've discovered that it's really through deliberate practice, through our concept development, through our warm-up fundamentals, our literature selection, and the literature progression. So once we've created our lists, of our three buckets of what skills should be mastered and what skills should be proficient, what we should introduce them, we need to develop a fundamental pedagogy program that will focus on that concept development that works on the abstract growth every day. As we develop the skill of our sonic perfection as well.